Hello, everybody. I'm Scott Bass with Edmund Optics, bringing you our next episode of Light Talk, where we break down trends from some of the best technical experts in the optics industry. And today is no different. I'm here with a very special guest, the principal laser engineer here at Edmund Optics, Matthew Dabney. Hi, Matthew. How are you today? I'm well. How about yourself, Scott? Good. Thank you. So you have a lot of experience. 30 years actually from research to fabricating and qualifying optics on the Hubble telescope, that's awesome by the way, uh, to publishing numerous papers on various topics and a PhD degree in material science. I can go on and on and I'm sure everybody would be very impressed, but what I really wanna talk about with you today is your reputation in the company. I'm sure you're wondering where I'm going with this, huh? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> so just so everyone is aware, Matthew is the guy who simply blows things up. Seriously, that's pretty much what he was hired to do. And from what I hear, he is really good at what he does. So Matthew, please explain to me and everyone else about this really cool job you have. Right. Okay, so um, I, I basically, I'm, I'm putting optics in front of lasers until they uh, fail. And it, it's very important for people that have laser systems like mine that you know how much energy you can put through the different optics before they blow up. And sometimes they do blow up catastrophically. And uh, it, it's very amusing if you like to watch stuff blow up. Um, it's also very frightening sometimes too. Sure. Uh, yeah, you, you need to know where you can take the different optics to before they fail. And so my job is to define where that line is for, for the optics so that people know where they can push it to, so. Fascinating, really. Okay, so obviously yeah. there, there is a reason you blow things up. Why is this work important for Edmund Optics? Yeah, so for Edmund Optics, we can design our coatings and our optics better so that they can withstand more energy for higher powered systems. And um, not only am I doing it for Edmund Optics to, for us to improve our systems, um, I'm also doing it for uh, to improve the systems at large. Uh, the testing mechanism is a little... Uh, nebulous, a little difficult to, for people to repeatedly reproduce everybody's uh, measurements. So the idea is that we can improve our systems in in-house and also help the world develop their, uh, a good testing method for, for everybody. Yeah, I was going to ask, although you do this specifically for m and Optics, I imagine your work does have implications that stretch well beyond the walls of our office. So tell us more about the impact your work has on the industry as a whole. Yeah, so, so the ISO standard that everybody goes off of is, like I said, it, it's a little fuzzy. So you can get different numbers testing the same optics from different places. It, it, it's just not very well defined. And so I'm working with uh, other testing houses to develop a standard that is much more precise and gives repeatable results for everybody so that everybody is testing the same thing and getting the same result. So okay. it's very important because if you buy an optic from one company and it's supposed to have a, a laser damage threshold of uh, say 10 joules per square centimeter and we test it and we get two joules per square centimeter, what, what are you gonna, trust, who do you trust and, and what are you gonna do? When you put it in your system, these two optics could perform exactly the same, but have very different numbers. So it, it, it's very important for laser users because if you have high powered lasers like I have, you can't have things blow up because now <laughs> you lose the optic yeah. that we're trusting, but it could also damage your multi-million dollar laser system. I can imagine. So, very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So you're you're hosting a webinar later this month, correct? Uh, yes. Uh, the webinar is basically some of the interesting uh, developments that I found through developing this this laser damage testing system. Yeah, because the title is the development of a robust laser damage threshold test bed. That's a mouthful. Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't know if you came up yeah, with, yeah. with the title. I'm, I'm just a marketing guy, sober my head. <laughs> but yeah, tell us what to expect from this webinar and how it relates to what we've been talking about. Um, so developing a, a, a consistent test bed that um, I, I tried to develop it in an automated way so that I don't have to be there testing each optic, you know, very carefully and, and trying to be repeatable. If I set up mm -hmm. a that's very repeatable and it, it is automated, then there's not a lot of decision making that can go wrong. 
Um, but in doing it, I ran across a number of issues and had to develop new optics and new systems to actually do this. So uh, I want to do this in a very transparent, uh, scientific and public way so other people could reproduce it and get the same results that I was getting. So that's what science is supposed to be. So that's yeah. very interesting. But yeah, there's a lot of very interesting optics and, and things that came up along the way. So Great. All right. Well, well, thank you. So for those who want to hear more from Matthew on this topic to understand the benefits of building an in-house laser test bed and, and what is needed to effectively and safely do this, yeah. join us on July 22nd, 11 a.m. Eastern time for this 30-minute webinar. In addition to Matthew's presentation, you will have the chance to participate in live Q&A with a team of technical experts. You can register for free on our website. And even if you can't attend live, I encourage everybody to at least sign up to view the recording later. So Matthew, thanks again for speaking to me. I personally yeah. am looking forward to your webinar. Um, but before I let you go, when are you blowing something up next? And can I join you? Uh, it's unclear. It depends on when the optics come into my hands, but I'll, I'll let you know. Let me know, please. <laughs> Uh, well, very nice. Okay, well, thanks again, Matthew. And thank you to everyone for taking the time. And we will see you soon. Very good.